Thank you very much. Okay, so welcome to the uh, WooCommerce uh, API integration session. I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, integrating, obviously, with the uh, WooCommerce API, uh, talking a bit about uh, why you might want to do that in the first place, and then the how, and I'll have a few demos uh, at the end. Uh, so a quick bit about me. I uh, won't uh, bore you with any more details, but uh, yeah, I'm the owner of a CEO, owner, cleaner of a company called Databuzz based in Sydney. Uh, I've been working um, as a software developer for almost uh, 30 years now, uh, which makes me feel uh, very old and somewhat wise and uh, experienced. Um, for those who are not familiar with WordPress, uh, sorry, WooCommerce, just quickly, uh, it's a plugin for WordPress, turns your WordPress site into an e commerce site so people can buy stuff and pay for stuff. Uh, it's uh, extremely customizable, there's over 100 extensions for WooCommerce uh, alone. Uh, it was founded in uh, September 2011, and it's uh, now part of the uh, uh, automatic family. Uh, I think something like 28 or 30 percent of all e-commerce sites uh, these days are running uh, WooCommerce, so uh, very popular. Okay, I wanted to talk a bit about my uh, journey to uh, how I got to here, sort of talking about the uh, integrating with the WooCommerce API. Um, uh, my company, we've got about five or six. Uh, uh, Oh, sorry, we've got a couple of stores, and uh, about five or six years ago, um, uh, the experience wasn't great. Uh, people would go to our website, they would click a big um, PayPal buy now button, take them to the PayPal website, uh, make their payment, and then we'd get an email. And um, we would then have to reply to that email, send them a tax invoice, attach the software they'd bought. Uh, so it was very sort of labor intensive, manual driven. Uh, wasn't a great experience. If the customer ordered, say, after nine o'clock on a Friday night, Sydney time, um, we probably wouldn't process that until Monday morning, uh, our time as well. So over the weekend, they'll get very anx anxious and think they've been scammed and cancel their credit card, send us all sorts of nasty. Uh, sometimes we'd email they'd bought and it would bounce back because they couldn't receive attachments that big. So it was all, it wasn't a very great experience. So uh, we knew we needed a, a better solution. So I started around and quickly found uh, WooCommerce and it worked really well with uh, WooCommerce. So within uh, short space of time, I'd created uh, two WooCommerce sites, and then we had a great experience. Customers could um, buy software online, pay online, get the uh, downloads automatically, and get a tax invoice automatically. So we didn't have to uh, we didn't have to do a thing. Uh, the missing piece for us was use WordPress or WooCommerce to run our business. We use it to run our website now, e-commerce stores, but we use other software like CRM software and then we have accounting software and we've got to get all those orders out of WooCommerce into our CRM and then into our um, accounting software as well. Uh, so being software developers, um, we looked at, uh, knowing that many of you do, that um, WordPress is built on a, a MySQL backend, we thought, oh, let's just use SQL to get the data. Um, uh, the trouble with that is it's, uh, there's no sort of uh, structure around how a, an order uh, system would typically works. So there's no orders table, there's no line items table, there's no products and customers table like you normally have. Um, there's things like post and post meta and all that sort of stuff. So you, uh, we worked out that you could create a, an SQL view to get a nice little representation of how a, um, uh, an order should look that we wanted at least. We wanted orders with line items that we could sort of suck everybody. Uh, and that was working quite well uh, until one day it, it stopped working and overnight uh, we couldn't connect and it took us about uh, uh, sort of one or two weeks to finally uh, track it down. We, we managed to get in touch with uh, the right person at our web hosting uh, uh, who said that yes, um, they'd turned off remote SQL access overnight. No, they didn't tell anyone. No, they weren't going to make it, any exceptions and um, thank you for your call. So we're in, we were stuck. We need a solution pretty quickly because we had to go back to manually uh, processing orders and that meant a lot of manual double data entry and we've got better things to do with our time than have our staff uh, re-enter data. So once again, I started looking around and um, realised that, oh, we, uh, WooCommerce has an API. And looking back, well, like our company, we live and breathe uh, APIs. So that We spent sort of working with APIs. And looking back, I'm sort of puzzled as to why we didn't just start with the uh, WooCommerce API in the first place. But um, that's how we got here. So um, before I get into the details of the WooCommerce API, just a quick bit about APIs, those who aren't familiar with them. Uh, so API stands for Application uh, Programming Interface. Uh, there's the uh, definition from uh, the great of uh, Wikipedia. Uh, I like thinking of it basically just as a set of instructions about how to get my software talking with um, your software. 
Um, some of you might have heard the phrase over the last few years about software is eating the world, and sort of that is uh, APIs are eating the world. Uh, APIs are sort of where these um, companies like uh, big and small have APIs. So WordPress obviously has an API uh, in the accounting. Zealand uh, Zero and uh, MYB have have built big platforms around their APIs. Uh, Twilio is a company you might have heard of in the states. They um, all they have is APIs. They've built a business on APIs around things like SMS messaging and, and voice messaging. Uh, and in the social media space, companies like uh, Twitter and um, Facebook also have APIs. So APIs everywhere. Okay, so why would you use the uh, WooCommerce APIs? So I've sort of alluded to it a bit. Um, uh, for m many of our customers, it comes down to one word, and that's uh, integration. It's about eliminating double data entry and hassle, saving yourself time. Um, you might have an uh, inventory system that contains all your, your products and you need to get that into your online store and you don't want to have to have your staff change in your internal system and then uh, retyping all that into your um, uh, WooCommerce system. That leads to sort of uh, data entry errors when you're doing things twice. Uh, like our business, many of our customers uh, have an internal uh, system that runs. You've got to get their orders into that as well and ultimately into their uh, accounting system. Um, the API also lets you do things that you can't uh, do easily in uh, the WooCommerce admin interface itself. So things like uh, bulk updates. So I can change the price of every product uh, or change the description or change the tags and categories and upload them uh, in one go at sort of the click of one button. Uh, we've had a couple of customers that um, also want to do things like send uh, their customers to a payment page and they don't want to have to, the, uh, basically they want them to not have to go to the website, find some products, build an order, add them to the cart, and check out. They just want to send them to the checkout page. So the uh, API lets us create an order, uh, attach all the uh, light items, uh, generate the uh, payment page link, and then just send the customer straight to that payment page, which seems a bit strange, but that's how some customers roll. OK, so uh, the benefits of all this, uh, as I mentioned, it's about saving time, eliminating double data entry, saving your company money. Um, uh, when I wake up in the morning and we've had a few orders overnight and I know that they've automatically found their way into our CRM system and ultimately into our accounting system and we haven't had to do anything, that's a, that's a great feeling and that gives us that sort of zen-like state of calm we've been seeking for many years. Um, so it's about taking the stress. Uh, staff have got much better things to do than um, be data entry clerks all day. So this is uh, uh, what you can achieve with using the API. So. Let's get into the details of the, uh, the WooCommerce uh, API itself. So there's the uh, URL for the documentation. It's a, it's a, it's a very well documented uh, API in, in our experience. Uh, to, this week was an exciting week in the uh, WooCommerce API space because a, a new version was released with uh, WooCommerce 3.5 has released version 3 of the uh, API. So there's currently three versions of the API in WooCommerce. Version 1 was for WooCommerce 2, version 2 was for WooCommerce 3 version 3 just came out for uh, WooCommerce 3.5. Uh, you get all three versions. Uh, they're all installed. They're all enabled. You don't have to install or turn anything. You just get them. Um, version 1 and version 2 are obviously going to be deprecated and removed possibly at some point. So any development you, you do today, you, you do with version 3. Uh, so it's a what's called a RESTful API. It lets us uh, make requests uh, to the API using um, standard HTTP verbs that you've probably heard of, like get, post, put, and uh, delete. Uh, and that allows us to create, read, update, and delete information all from outside of WooCommerce using uh, the API. Uh, there's code samples for a lot of the popular programming languages, Curl, Node, PHP, Python, uh, Ruby, and some SDKs, that official ones that you can download and get going with straight away. So the first thing you normally uh, need to resolve when you're working with an API for the first time is uh, authentication. How do I connect to the API securely and safely know then known it's just me and, and no one else? Uh, so the uh, WooCommerce API gives us uh, two options, and that depends on how your site's served. Uh, if it's served over uh, HTTP, so no SSL certificate, uh, they have this uh, OAuth 1.0a one-legged authentication uh, which is quite convoluted, and I certainly wouldn't recommend it. And uh, that's all I'm going to talk about it today, because uh, I strongly have the opinion that you should be serving your site over uh, HTTPS. Uh, these days, SSL certificates are extremely cheap and free in some cases. 
And uh, for me, if you're using WooCommerce, you're capturing customer information, so that's what's called personally identifiable information. You're capturing orders, and you're touching sort of payment pr uh, processes, credit cards, and that sort of stuff. Uh, you really should be using uh, HTTPS. And if you're doing that, then authentication is much simpler with the API. Uh, you just need to generate a set of API keys using uh, the WooCommerce admin, which I'll show a bit later. Uh, and they become, you could generate what's called a consumer key and a consumer secret, and they or username and password in to the API. And screenshot of that in the uh, WooCommerce API. So you go to the advanced settings section on REST API, create a new key, and you'll get a, a screen like that. And you basically uh, copy that consumer key and consumer secret, store it in a safe place, and that's how you'll, what you'll use uh, to authenticate going forward. Okay, so there's, oops, there's four types of requests I'm going to cover. So uh, they are basically create and delete. Uh, and they all have a sort of quite a, a similar structure. So let's talk about the create request. So this is where you want to add some data to WooCommerce. So it might be a customer or a product uh, or an order or a category or tag. Um, so in this case, you're going to do an HTTP post request uh, to an endpoint. So that endpoint is, is customers, products, and so on. Uh, so you're going to include your authentication header, uh, uh, which I'll show in a second. And that's got your password, so that's how you authenticate. Um, so the WooCommerce API is built around JSON as the data structure. So you need to, uh, when you're sending receiving data, it's all in JSON. So you'll need to be uh, able to uh, sort of encode and decode JSON uh, at that point. Um, and that means you need to include the, uh, the content type application JSON header as well. Um, you'll get a JSON response back if it's all successful. And uh, when you're creating something, um, uh, you'll, when um, the WooCommerce API gives you a response, it includes the, um, uh, the ID, the WooCommerce ID. And you generally want to sort of capture that and store that somewhere, because if you're ever going to touch that record again through the API, whether it's updating it, getting it, or deleting it, you'll need to tell WooCommerce uh, which ID that you uh, want to touch. So here's a, so I'm using curl from all my examples. That's example in um, curl, so you can see, I won't, yeah, I won't use my angle's not great for the laser, but um, you can see you've, you're doing an HTTP post request to the customer's endpoint. Uh, you see the version three there, that's how you know which version of the EPO you're, you're referencing. Uh, you've got your username and password in, that's the consumer key and secret, content type header, and then just the JSON data. So email, first name, last name, and username. OK, so following up from the create request is the update request. It's basically the same as the create request, except you're doing a put instead of a So in API world, creating records, puts normally about updating records, although sometimes it's first. Um, in this case, we're, we reference the endpoint, but we also reference the ID at the end of the endpoint. So which record, what's the record? Uh, we include the same authentication header, same content type JSON header, and uh, the same JSON as well. Um, so the only difference with doing an update request is that you only need to, if you want to, send the changes, the things that you want to actually update. Um, so if you're updating the status of an order, you could just send the order status. If you're updating a email address, you just send the email address. Uh, it's up to you. In our uh, company, we, we send everything, because uh, the data that you send for a create or an update can be the same. So it's just easier for us to sort of recycle the code and, and do it that way. Okay, so there's an example of an update request, uh, very similar to the create request, except it's just got the uh, ID on the end of the, uh, the URL. And I'm, I'm just including the data that's what's going to be changed. Okay, so there are the two ways you can send data up to uh, WooCommerce. Now we're going to talk about uh, downloading data from WooCommerce. So that's when you do a, a GET request. So GET request, typing in a URL in your browser. Um, uh, there's data to send. You're basically just specify an endpoint, and um, there's two types of ways you want to download data. You might want to download a, a single record or uh, a group of records. So we'll cover the uh, single record first. So when you do a single record, like a uh, update request, you need to specify the ID of the record that you want to uh, get, and you just build out the URL, you include the authentication header, and that's it. You don't need to send any JSON or anything, just create the URL. 
and you'll get back that record, the full JSON uh, object for that record as well. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, that's what the uh, response looks like. So you can see the ID and the, the JSON data for the particular record you've requested. Uh, the next type of request is when you want to get more than one. So you might want to get uh, all the products in a particular category, uh, all the orders from last week or yesterday, all the tags, all the categories, whatever it might be. Uh, so this is where you're, you're doing a, still doing a GET request, but you obviously just specify an endpoint, say orders, uh, with no ID. And um, you can now uh, build out uh, the URL a bit further by including extra parameters and uh, the concept of pagination. So uh, if you look at my little uh, URL here, you can see uh, I'm saying get me all the orders uh, after that date and before that date and give me page one and order them by ID in ascending order. So let's talk a bit about uh, pagination. So uh, when I tell WooCommerce to give me lots of records, a list, um, by default it just gives me 10. And obviously if I had 10,000 orders in my WooCommerce site, I wouldn't want to get those automatically because that would sort of flood the connection. Uh, the API would sort of slow to a crawl. My computer probably slowed to a crawl while it's processing that. So uh, there's always limits when you get in uh, multiple records. So you get 10 by default. You can override that 10 by specifying a value for the uh, per page. So if you want a 20 or 50, you can do that. Um, when you uh, get a, a group of records, um, you need to examine what's called the response headers. And WooCommerce will tell you how many records it found, how many pages uh, you're going to need to uh, uh, use to get all those records, and it'll give you the link for the next uh, page as well. So you don't have to sort of programmatically work out uh, what all that stuff is. If we have a look at uh, an example of the response headers, uh, I've highlighted some things in red. So at the top is the response code. So anytime you work with an API, you should always uh, get the response code and see if it was a successful re response. So 200 series is, is normally the success uh, series. I'll talk a bit more about that shortly. Uh, you can see here uh, we've got the XWP total. So that means 21 means I found 21 records. Total pages is three. So I need to make three requests if I'm getting 10 per page to get all 21 records. There, uh, helpfully, is the link to the next page. So I don't need to work out that. I can just go and grab that link header and use that for my next page if, if I'm sort of looping through getting all of these in one request. Okay, so the final request I wanted to cover is the delete request. Um, delete request is very similar to an update or a get single record. It's basically specifying an endpoint with the ID of the record that you uh, wish to delete. Uh, you're not sending any JSON data. You're basically just doing an HTTP delete request to the endpoint. Um, uh, the only thing you need to be aware of is not all uh, resources support the concept of trashing, and that's where you can delete a record and it goes into the trash. It's not permanently deleted. Um, some of the endpoints in the documentation tells you this. You need to include an initial parameter, uh, the false equals true, and that permanently uh, deletes the record immediately, so you'll, you'll never get it back uh, when you delete that type of record. Okay, so I wanted to talk a bit about uh, webhooks as well. Uh, webhooks, uh, for those who are not familiar with what a webhook is, it's, uh, it's a way of having um, a notification sent uh, to your server, essentially, when a certain action or trigger event occurs. So uh, for WooCommerce, um, this might be when a customer is updated or when a uh, order is created, for example. Uh, and that's a screenshot of um, uh, the uh, webhook set up in the uh, WooCommerce admin screen. Um, uh, here's an example of a workflow from our, our company, uh, how we use uh, webhooks. So uh, when our, one of our web store, WooCommerce web stores gets a new order, uh, we have a webhook fire off that to uh, our internal server, and that, creates, that contains all the uh, information for that particular order. But uh, it's a new order, it's not a completed order, so that order doesn't have all the information that we need uh, right then. So we, we wait, a, we wait a, sort of a moment in time, a couple of minutes, I think, from memory, and then we, we make a GET request to the WooCommerce API to get the latest version of that order, and that includes all the payment information, which is the, the main thing that's missing from when it was first created. And then we pull that back into our internal CRM, so we've got the latest order, so a couple of minutes later, and then we fire that off using uh, the Zero API, which is our accounting uh, software that we use. So within about five minutes of getting an order, it's in our CRM system, it's the updated version, and it's in our accounting system, and that all happens without us uh, having to lift a finger. So webhooks are great if you want to 
automate workflows and not have to go and get data from WooCommerce, but have it push you data uh, automatically. Okay, so just some uh, tips I've sort of picked up over the years of working with uh, various versions of the API. Um, so just worth noting, timestamps are always in that ISO 8601 format. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you should always check the uh, HTTP response code because uh, you want to know whether it was a 200 or 201, that's the successful uh, response codes. You might make a request to get a customer that doesn't exist, so you'll still get a successful re response code, but just, it'll tell you it didn't find anything. Uh, so you need to sort of differentiate between did I get the data that I wanted and versus did my API was my API request successful. Uh, so 400 series are for the sort of request errors, the invalid JSON 401 for unauthorized, you've got some problem with your API keys, 500 is a server error and so on. Uh, if you wanted to upload images, say for a product uh, via the API, uh, WooCommerce only lets you upload images by including the full URL for the image, so it's going to ingest it and add it to your product when it downloads it. Uh, you can also reference, if it's an existing image in your WordPress media library, you can just tell it what the media library ID is and it'll, uh, it'll just link it to your product. Uh, if you're wanting to upload a local file, uh, you need to use something like the uh, WordPress API, which does support uploading local files and then grabbing the media ID and adding that to your uh, upload request. Um, so WooCommerce has got a standard set of fields for things like products and orders and customers. Um, but it might not have all the fields that your customers need um, for their particular store. So uh, a lot of our customers uh, use custom fields for their um, store. Um, and the, the way they do that is through changing the PHP code or using one of the popular custom field plugins. Uh, so it's just worth mentioning that the custom field data that you get isn't part of the sort of the core uh, WooCommerce REST API, but it, it's generally included in what's called the metadata section or the metadata uh, that's attached to a product or attached to an order, and I'll show an example of that in a minute too. Um, yeah, if you find any bugs, just report them through the GitHub page. They get fixed really quickly in my experience. So I've reported about half a dozen over the years and they've always been fixed and included in the next release of WooCommerce. Uh, if you're not sure where to start with all of this, um, I'd strongly recommend a tool like Postman. It's a free HTTP client app that you can download and you can use it to construct these requests, add your authentication header and just see how it all works and examine the response and the response headers. And finally, uh, just a bit on the new features of the WooCommerce version 3 of the API that was released a couple of days ago. So every time a new version of the API comes out, there's normally new endpoints or updates to existing ones. So in a few endpoints, so we get a reviews endpoint, uh, we get a, a reports endpoint, uh, a new data endpoint. Um, you can now refund line items through the API. That's been a sort of a, a popular request over the years. And you can now um, edit some things like date fields on the products endpoint that previously uh, were not, weren't editable by the uh, API. And when you're looking at the documentation, the API will tell you if a field is um, read-only or not. Okay, so I think that's the end of my slides. Let's crack open some demos. Okay, so I'm just going to use, just do a bit of Postman first. So this is Postman for those who haven't seen it. Uh, it's a free download. You can use it to construct HTTP requests and just see everything about it. Um, so here's a, a little simple example. I've got my um, URL there for my version 3 of the products uh, endpoint and I'm targeting in the uh, products tag. So I, I want to create a new tag in this example. So I've put in my um, authentication username and password, my consumer key and consumer secret. And uh, Postman does a great job in that it generates the authentication header automatically. I've added in my content type application JSON header. So I'm basically ready to go. So now it's JSON that I'm sending. So I just need to uh, choose the JSON body type and construct some JSON. So I'm going to create a new uh, tag for my product called products called cake ingredients. So I'm just going to click send. That's going to make this request. I'm using my little phone here for the internet. So yes, that worked. And it's come back with a uh, response. So you can see um, that was successful. There's my ID. So I could now store that ID number 96 in my particular system, whatever I'm using. And if I was to rename that in the future, I can do an update request and say update 
ID number 96 and it'll uh, update it for me. Um, if you want to look at the headers that come back, you'll see them here. This was uh, just a, uh, a create request, so we don't get the, the totals and all that sort of stuff, but that's where you go to sort of examine the uh, response headers that you get back. Uh, let's look at creating a customer now. Um, here's a, oops, a customer, oops. There we go. Um, so once again, I'm doing a, um, a post, and these are where you choose the different HTTP verbs you want to play with. So I'm going to do a post to the customer's endpoint. Here's all my customer data. Um, so let's just hit send, and that should work. Okay, so in this case, uh, I've got an error. Um, and this is uh, how you can tell that you've got an error. So I've got a status code of uh, 401. So 401 means unauthorized, so I've also got some problem with my uh, API keys. And um, if you, uh, WooCommerce normally gives you a sort of uh, generally a helpful message, and you can examine the headers, and that, that might also tell you uh, a bit more information about what the particular error was. But I sort of know from experience that 401's unauthorized, so I would need to go and uh, fix my um, consumer key and consumer secret. Okay, so that's how you can check for uh, an error. Um, now, I forgot to actually show you how to create these keys, so let's jump over to the WordPress WooCommerce admin screen. So here I am, I've just gone to WooCommerce, I've gone to Settings, Advanced, REST API, and you just click Add Key to uh, create a new key. Uh, you give it a name. Uh, you choose the user to associate that key with, so the, sort of the privileges. And then you choose, if it, is it read, write, or, or read and write. And then when you generate the key, it'll come back with the uh, consumer key and consumer secret. So at this point, you need to copy and paste those and store there somewhere secure. Um, you'll never see these again at this point. So if you don't make another of them, you've got to go, go and create another one again. So make sure you note those down. Otherwise, you'll need to start again. Uh, webhooks are also in the same advanced settings section. So if you wanted to create a new webhook, uh, you just come in here and uh, go add webhook. Uh, do that again. And yeah, once again, you'd give it a name. And uh, the important thing is choosing the topic or what's the trigger or what's the that you want this webhook to fire on. So. These are the, uh, the predefined options that uh, WooCommerce gives us. Uh, so generally, it's about when something was created or updated. So I, that's the auto-created one. That's the one that we use in our business. Um, but you also get some other ones around uh, products as well. OK, so let's um, I'm going to switch over to uh, FileMaker. So we do a lot of work, as was mentioned earlier, um, in uh, the FileMaker platform. It's a popular platform for small businesses. It's a uh, of Apple. Um, and it's great. It runs on sort of Mac, Windows, mobile, and the web, and you can use it to integrate uh, with lots of APIs. So we use it to integrate with uh, WooCommerce in particular. So I might want to uh, download all my orders for the month of October, for example. So here I'm doing a request, and I'm filtering by date range, and um, I'll click that button to say, get me all the orders between those two dates. So it's getting me a list. I'm getting 10 at a time, and it's just sort of working its way through them. It's happening over my mobile phone, so it might be a tiny bit slow. And uh, there we are. So if this was my internal system. I've now got all my orders in here. I can then go and modify them, print shipping labels, and anything else I might, might want to do in my sort of CRM system. And then I can send them emails and send it off to uh, my accounting system as well. Um, I think that was all I had for my uh, demo. So let me just switch back to my slides. Yep. Okay, so there's my contact details. So I'll be around for a couple of days if you have any questions. But now, yeah, I'd like to open up for questions.